this example, I've taken the Code Camper application and I've loaded it up into Team Foundation Service. Now, this isn't Team Foundation Server that runs on your in your data center on premise. This is the cloud version of Team Foundation running out in Windows Azure. And I've uploaded the source. You can see all of the different solutions here in the source browser. And what I want to be able to do then is link this to my Windows Azure website so that when I do a build, I can publish out to the Windows Azure website on completion of that successful build to implement my continuous integration. So I've got my website hosted out here in Windows Azure websites. And one of the things that I have as a link is to set up TFS publishing. If I go in here, put in my URL for my particular Visual Studio setup, it's going to allow me to do an authorization step. So we're going to go out. It wants to connect this websites and approving this is going to allow it to work on my Visual Studio, right? It's going to be able to go into my Team Foundation services and work on my version control, my builds right, within that account. So I'm doing a little OAuth dance here so that I can link these together. There we go. I've got my code camper now as the site or the project that I want to link to this website. And it's going back and connecting those together. So this is going to allow for the Windows Azure website system to go out to Visual Studio, or rather Visual uh, Team Foundation Services, and set up a build and set up all of this information. So now I can go out to my Visual Studio 2012 and it kind of tells me here's what you need to do. Uh, to go do that. I've already got it opened up here and configured. Let's go to our index.cshtml. You can see we're not going to have a, a whole lot of content, but we'll just come in and we'll put in an Azure there on the code camper, make a change to that file, and now I can go out and check in. a little comment and this is going to go out now and should trigger a build on my server so we've got our pending changes here let's go out to our builds tab you can see I've got a build here that's been requested continuous integration we can see there's a request in the queue and we can get a, a sense that by linking these together my check-in now has kicked off a build. So if I go to the build definition, you can see I've got the trigger set by default to continuous integration so that every time I make a check-in it's going to try and do a build and it's going to then at the end of that build publish out to Windows Azure websites. We go back here to our summary. You can see that build request is out there. So if we come out here now to our website, you can see that we have this deployments tab and it already knows about it. It knows that this is deploying, so information about the change set and who made the check-in. We can see that we've got a failure now. We can go view the log to find out what the problem is. So we've got a problem with our build. If we start looking, we'll see it has to do with the NuGet.targets. So my solution's using NuGet. And what I need to do then is I'm going to come over to the Solution Explorer and if I go to Manage NuGet Packages, what you'll need to do is go in your Settings in General here and check this box. So Allow NuGet to download missing packages during build. That's going to set up a few things for you. One is if I go look in my Windows Explorer, you'll see here I now have this .NuGet folder and it has some config in there and it actually has a targets file that's referenced by my projects. So I'm going to go to my source control right here in Visual Studio and I'm going to add that folder in and I'm going to go and include this guy, the NuGet EXE. So all those things are there. I can check in those changes. I'll say check in NuGet package restore. So the change set is there. 
again, we should be able to go over to our builds because now that we've done a check-in, it's going to go ahead and kick off the build process again. Again, if we go out to Windows Azure websites, go to our deployments, we can see right now it's deploying. And we can watch the status either here or in Visual Studio, depending on your preference. Now that it's completed, we can see we've got our active deployment out there. We go back to our dashboard. That'll give us a quick link to our website. And we can see when that comes up, our changes have now been integrated. There's our title that's been updated out there. So what you saw as we were doing that deployment was that we connected our Azure website over to Team Foundation Service. We authorized it to make changes. And if we go over to our site here, in the home, and go to our build, And we can see now that we've got our continuous deployment build definition that was created by Windows Azure. It set that whole thing up for us, which includes publishing out to our website. We've got our history of our deployments out here that we can see. And by enabling the NuGet package restore, when we deployed, it was able to pull down all the NuGet packages. I don't have to have those checked into source control. So I don't have all those binaries and things checked in over there. We get full integration with Visual Studio, of course, to Team Foundation Service. And now we get the full integration of pushing that over to the Windows Azure websites. Let's come back now to the website. We'll just make another slight change so we can see the difference here. So we'll make that Azure websites. And we'll go and do a check-in. can't make up my mind so I keep changing the title and we'll check that in that'll kick off another build and that'll get deployed out to Windows Azure as well. Now we'll see when we go to the deployments tab is that we have our active deployment. There we see the new deployment kicking off and so once that one is done, then that will become the active deployment. That's going to be what's out there on our website and what's active. But we have this link now between Windows Azure websites and our Team Foundation service to see these different deployments and to be able to see what's current and see what our previous deployments were. When this finishes deploying, we'll validate that it deployed. And then we'll come back here and be able to roll back, if we want to, to a previous deployment. There we go. Now we can see that our latest Deployment is in fact the active deployment. We can browse. That'll take us out. That's another shortcut out to the website. And we can see that those changes now have been pushed out to the website and it's been updated. Now if we want to quickly come back, we can select this particular deployment and we can choose to redeploy and indicate that we want to go back. So are you sure you want to use this particular deployment? So now if we go over to our Team Foundation and look at the queued builds, we can see this particular build has been queued up a couple minutes ago. It's out there. It's currently in progress. And so what we should see then is when that build completes, we can see that it's deploying. And it's going to roll back now. That's change set 11. So the same change set here. It's going to deploy that particular build with that change set. And we'll roll back then to our previous code base 
and take out any bugs or issues that we may have introduced with that change set 12. We can see now that's been marked as the active deployment. We can go back. We can also see that that was a manual change as opposed to these continuous integrations. So we can see why that came about. And if we go out and refresh on our website, we're going to lose the websites piece here and it'll go back to codecamper.azure and the rest of the application will load up. So by integrating our source control system, we get a continuous integration with our Windows Azure websites that allows us not only the back end integration, but we also get full visibility into the deployments, the ability to roll back deployments on a particular website, and to see that history of what's happened out there, all while working with the tools that we would normally use.